You know what the um, cheapest thing this time of year that you can get at the butcher shop is? I feel like this is going to be a bad joke. Gear balls. You know why? Because they're under a buck. <laughs> Deer hunting with you is like going to Disneyland. Is that supposed to be nice? You know how much I like Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you are not going to believe this. Sid's going deer hunting with me this afternoon. Sid is going deer hunting with me this afternoon. Let me explain how this came to be, okay? Let me explain what happened that led to this. And let's pray that Sid is a lucky charm. I am. I'm magically delicious. <laughs> See those extra two indentions right behind that track? See them right there? That's definitely a buck. And he's moving that away right there. Pretty good sized buck, right? So this is the direction that buck was moving. You see that ground all scraped up right there? And now look at these branches. See that branch there? And these branches here so he's coming in here or they scraping up the ground and whacking that tree around a little bit here's another spot where the ground's kind of scraped up no activity since the last rain though and these tracks here have been rained off but take a look at that branch busted up and Right down there is that other branch. So they're just coming along this line right here. So we're about at the end of the plot here. I'll walk in here and see if I see any other kind of fresh activity. Oh yeah. So kind of they're, they're scraping up underneath the underneath this cedar tree too. It's a lot of activity back here in the back of the field. But Again, it rained yesterday, and all these tracks that I'm seeing right here, these are these are tracks that uh, that have been rained on, been rained on. So I'm looking for more tracks that are fresh, maybe from today, to decide if I'm hunting this field tomorrow or the other one. So here's some really fresh, really fresh. In fact maybe within hours see that vegetation in there uh decent amount of activity of course right over here by the feeder and these are all these are all youngsters does uh yearlings and uh you know maybe some young bucks in here but uh, i mean look if you're grocery shopping this is what it's all about tell you what though Look at that guy there, right? That's a good sized buck right there. Uh, this is since the rain, so it's in the last 24 hours. But you see how this vegetation in here is not still mashed flat. It's kind of recovered a little bit. Um, this is definitely not within the last few hours, but it's, uh, it's within the last 24 anyway. So that's good. Got another, another scrape right here right under just this little cedar branch hanging out so uh i don't think any big bucks have been using that but ton of activity over here no doubt about it right over there's my little shooting house so i believe these deer are coming up this this is a creek kind of a trench here uh over here's the, the food plot and feeder i believe they're coming up this trench and coming out but what's interesting is i've never walked back on the other side of this trench and uh there's a little water here i'm gonna walk down this tree line right here 
and see if we've got any rub activity or any activity at all. You can kind of see, you know, the trenches down in here, uh, right along the base of those trees, but you got a wood line here that's about 30 feet thick uh, that just kind of follows this trench down. And it's open field on this side, a lot of open field. And obviously on the other side of this trench is where my food plot is. And there's a trench just like this on the other side of that food plot. And I think they're using these trenches kind of as little highways to get up here and feel kind of safe uh, while they inspect the plot before they step out into it. That's kind of what I'm counting on anyway. That's why I put the plot where I put it. But let's see what's going on down here. That That's an old break on that branch. It's just got nothing to do with... I mean, I'm not seeing anything that suggests any real activity here. It's hard to say what broke that. But uh, there's nothing else to go along with that to suggest it was any kind of a target species here. With all the scrape and lick and stick activity we had going on on the other side, I would expect to see something under something like this here, um, along this side of the ditch. And I'm just not, I'm not seeing anything. A uh, little bit of traffic coming in and out of the ditch right here. But, uh, again, I'm not convinced that that's deer could be the occasional um, nothing about this side of the ditch is suggesting to me that I need to be hunting over here as I get down here further toward the end of the ditch it's starting to get thicker and while I'm still not seeing any real signs of activity I believe that ditch is kind of the freeway my concern is if I push any further into that thick stuff I might jump something and uh, even though I do have a brush rifle with me right now, my intention right now is not to hunt. And um, I definitely don't want to impact tomorrow's hunt. Those coming you heard mommy <laughs> great we're gonna have to go lock him up okay he can't come with us bunko stay so with frankie on her ffa trip uh today the part of frankie will be played by sid mike is taking me hunting i don't know how much actual hunting i will do i think i will be filming and being quiet um i'm not actually going to be hunting because i haven't been practicing as diligently as they have but um, since I identified some really good activity, I have to hunt. I, I can't I can't skip this. Today's a really good yeah. day. Uh, the weather's right. The wind is blowing the right direction. You're wearing your Amis mustache. There's a there's a storm front coming in. Uh, it would just it'd be a bad idea to skip today. So yeah. um, don't skip leg day, folks. That's right. Don't skip deer day. Don't skip so deer day. So we need to get out there. We are gonna we're gonna okay. we're gonna we're gonna, be gonna go. we're gonna go we're gonna go right now. I can go put Bunko up so he doesn't follow us because he's already heard my voice and has uh, followed me over here. So I gotta go deal with him. We have to walk quietly and quickly. It's your first time going deer hunting, isn't it? Yeah. You have to be very, very quiet when you're hunting rabbits. Yeah. I already yelled at Mike for shuffling his feet. Just for fun. I think Mike's gonna get a deer today. I do. I think I'm good luck charm. And I think that my milkshake brings all the does to the yard. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Plus, I get to wear this fetching outfit. I feel like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Frankie's gonna be mad that you took all her clothes. That's all right, she steals my stuff all the time. That's life.
about it's about 300 yards to our deer stand blind and we're gonna hustle we're gonna get there as fast as we can because we're getting in here about a half hour later than i want to right now so we need to get there get in the blind get our stuff situated and get quiet as quickly as possible because they they could be coming out anytime between now and dark so let's hustle Hey guys, I don't often review products, but when I have an experience with a product or with a company that I genuinely feel like you guys should be aware of, I'm going to share that. And that, and that's what that's what happened here. I was looking for a inside the waistband solution for my Ruger LC9. I did a little research online, looked at different companies, and landed on Eclipse. Uh, family owned, they got a good story. Uh, woman owned from Alaska, you know she. Uh, she does a lot of custom work, started a company, and it felt like a company I wanted to support. I went ahead and ordered the inside the waistband Kydex solution for a Ruger LC9S, as well as a double mag pouch. The products arrived, uh, the price was, was very fair. Um, I went ahead and uh, brought it here to show you, okay? so we all know we're clear and safe. This is what the product looks like, all right? Now, a couple things about this. Look at this click, watch this. I mean, you're gonna love this. I was not aware of that when I purchased it, right? Uh, but I'm really happy with the fit. It holds it tight, but it draws pretty easy, okay? Another interesting thing that I wasn't aware of is see how it protects the safety right here, okay? Um, watch this. Oh, safety's still on. I love that, I love that. That's just, that's just great. I love the fit, I love the way it holds it. I love, you know, I've, I've worn it in a couple of areas now, um, and you know, it holds it really well, but it also draws really well, okay? And I like that. The problem that I had was with the mag pouch. 
So the mag pouch right away is a little bulkier than I thought it was going to be. Okay. But take a look at this. Nah, that's not going to work for me. So I reached out via email and let them know how happy I was with the holster and how unhappy I was with the mag pouch. And immediately they responded, um, said, really sorry to hear that. Can you send us a, a short video clip uh, showing the, you know, the fit issue? So I did that. I sent a short video clip showing uh, the issue with the fit and got a response back right away. They were probably going to discontinue that product. Uh, they were very sorry. Uh, immediately made some recommendations for, um, for what I probably do want. Um, we had a little back and forth about that, and I decided that I wanted to actually settle on a single mag pouch because I wanted it to be less bulky. So I went with this single mag pouch that Nancy actually recommended. She was awesome. Uh, great customer service. And this fit is really good. It holds it nice and tight, but you can actually draw it fairly easy. Has the same clip, fits my area belt perfectly. Um, love it, love it. So here's how this went down. They refunded my money for the mag pouch. They sent me the single mag pouch that I am ecstatically happy with. And they said, go ahead and keep the double mag pouch that you have. Now, I wanna show y'all something. 1911. What? That is an outstanding fit for the 1911 mags. So, uh, Eclipse, if you guys watch this, before you discontinue that product, you might take a look at that and rebrand it. Anyway, listen guys, I needed to share this with you. I felt like it was important um, for you guys to know that quality of product is not the only thing that's important. This is high quality product, but their customer service is outstanding and that is equally important. American made company. I reached out to them and I said, hey guys, can you give me some kind of a, of a promo code that I can give my viewers if I tell them about your product and they were happy to do so. So guys, 3MS. If you use promo code 3MS, you're gonna get 20% off of your purchase from Eclipse. And guys, I'm not getting anything out of this. They did not solicit this review, nor are they giving me any kind of kickback. I was just so happy with this product and with the way the customer service went down that I felt like I needed to share that with you guys. And if I can get you guys a discount in the process, even better. Now let's get back to our regularly scheduled programming. shooting in kind of a hillside or be elevated and shooting down flat and the pasture behind this that guy has cows so as close as we are to the ground right now my bullet's gonna dive within five six hundred yards but and I am shooting at a slight angle down but I gotta be mindful. I gotta be looking through the trees all the while while I'm waiting for deer to come out. Make sure that none of those cattle have moved over to this side of his property. Right now I see none. But it's just something to be aware of. Deer with no eyes. Illegal deer with no eyes. <laughs> no idea. Got any more jokes you want me to fix for you? <laughs> Your face. The whole idea is.
guess that we're early. Don't want to show up when they're here. Want to get here, get settled in before they show up, and then let them walk right up on you. <clears throat> I see how this hunt's about to go. What the fuck? Keep finding your voice when you're trying to whisper. Stop that. No, that's right. <laughs> Buck. Buck right now. Yep. Get on it, baby. Yeah, I got no shot. Rearranging all this to get a shot out that window. The only thing I could do. Yeah. It'd be a straight on chest shot. The bummer is, he's headed towards us. So he's going to smoke us. The only thing we can hope is that he, that he wins us now. Doesn't realize we're in here. Goes back into the woods. Comes back out later up there. But if he walks all the way up to this toast. Can't see through there. Got his nose up in the air. Yeah, he's grunting. He smells us. He smells us. He just doesn't know where we are. I'm not buck hunting today anyway. I'm grocery shopping. I'd rather shoot a doe. Yeah. I can tell his rack's about as wide as his ears, which is decent. like that straight on shot and I would be in a very uncomfortable position trying to make the shot and he's right in that age group of buck that I don't want to kill he's good size I want to let him go another year I want to kill a really young buck or doe or an old mongo buck but I don't want to kill that mid-size six or eight point. As soon as you shoot them, they stop growing. Now he's broadside. Like, like a Texas, like he wants to fight. And then I kill him. Now he gets to live, but I mean, he wants to die. Not the one I want. Is John Travolta in my Emily Nanny and John? Here's, the, that long. here's the thing. The fact that he is now no longer looking this direction. He's eating acorns off the ground. It's a good sign. Because whatever scent he got of us wasn't enough to run him off. So the odds of a deer coming out up there in front of us right now are still really high. And hopefully, if one does, it's the one we want. It's that, that younger doe or like, you know, a little fork, a really young buck. I just don't want to kill this buck. Is it a good thing you don't? I would let Frankie kill that buck. If she was shooting right now, ah, it's a 200-yard shot. Might not let her take a 200-yard shot, but... She said she wanted to shoot that buck. I'd let her shoot it, but I'm not going to shoot it. And his, I couldn't tell how many points he was, but I could tell that he was as wide as his ears. So he's a two and a half, three year old. So if he lives till next year, he'll be a really nice deer. We have several deer around here in his category. If we let all of them walk, We'll get one of them next year when it's bigger. Can't really use the deer grunt right now. That's how we're going to get attacked and die in this thing. That's how you die in the tent. Well, problem is, 
What a mature buck responding to a drunk. He's pretty much always when he, when he pinpoints audibly about where it is, he's always going to position himself downwind of that spot. It's not like he's going to come out into that field in front of us trying to see what's grunting, even if he hears us from the other side of that. I go hide in the creek and make him a grunt and then you can get him. That's a great idea. Go hide in the creek. <laughs> Deer hunting with you is like going to Disneyland. Is that supposed to be nice? You know how much I like Disneyland. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Manifest. Like a two year old or less doe. Upwind of us. Right now. And I'll put her in the freezer. Even if that deer he went back in the creek. Even if he travels south on this creek and presents himself, I don't think I want to shoot him. You do. I don't think I do. I think you do. That dog that was presenting him. Oh God says that you have to go and let him. Now you're getting God involved. Yeah. Let's have meat in the freezer. Look, look right over there. Do you see it? I can't see it. I believe it's a doe. You hear that behind you? It's eating up. Yeah. That's a perfect doe. I don't like the shot. Walking along the edge back there. Something in the woods right behind you. She's dead behind the uh, deer feeder. She's looking behind her. Something following her. This is set up for Frankie. Too low. It's a spike. It's a buck. Looking at something. Grab a shot. He was right down. Yeah. Good job. All right, let's go get the tractor. So we're walking back. Uh, yeah, we're gonna. We're not. We're, not, we're just gonna leave him. I don't want to run over there and put any pressure on him in case, in case the shot wasn't as good as I'm pretty sure it was. Well, he dropped right away. Yeah, we're gonna go get the tractor so that we can just load him into the bucket and. uh Try to get back out here and get him before it gets dark so you know i said i said i didn't want to shoot a buck unless it was a really young buck and that was i mean yeah we thought it was a doe at first but... yeah i thought it was a doe when he kind of came out and gave me a broadside shot that's when i realized it was a spike and i went and i hesitated i didn't take the first broadside shot he gave me because i was trying to decide if I wanted to kill him or not, I had already decided that I would kill a young buck 
But then we saw so much deer activity that I was like, if we wait 10 more minutes, there's probably going to be a doe. But then you don't, but then know that you don't always know that. Yeah. And he was on the list for what I would harvest tonight. So, yeah. so then when he turned again, he gave me that, that kind of, he was kind of quartering. <laughs> he wasn't quartering away. He was broadside slightly quartering away. I mean, it was a clean shot. I had to take it. Yeah. Especially since there was a giant oak tree right behind the kill zone. And I didn't have to concern myself at all about the background backdrop. So anyway. He's gonna be so excited. I mean yeah. slash jealous. <laughs> yeah, she could have made that shot. A hundred percent she would have she would have got that deer. I didn't range it. We'll range it later. It's 110 yards to the feeder. And he was 30 yards behind the feeder. So. You think he was even that far behind the feeder? Uh, 20. Yeah. I mean, it was definitely inside of 150 yards. Yeah. So it was a pretty easy shot. You did good, babe. I texted Frankie that um, a picture of me in the blind saying that I was hunting. And she's like, really? Get a big one, mom. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm just holding the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy's going to feed it, <laughs> but we got meat now. Have you, have you texted her yet that we got him? No, because I was filming, and then uh, you were walking and filming. So I'll text her a picture. I'll yeah. take the Here you can have this back. obligatory picture of uh, you by your groceries. And I'll text that to her. Just a moment of truth. Let's see how that shot was. Yeah, he's a youngster. Well, there's the exit right there. Yeah. So, like I said, he was quartering. He was broadside, but slightly quartering away. Mm -hmm. uh, so my entry would have been a little further back and exit front of the shoulder. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, he's real young. A little higher than I thought, but definitely uh, a job. Yeah, it was a long shot, it was but out. it was definitely higher than I thought because we sighted that in for Frankie at a hundred yards, and I thought this was about 150. I actually held a couple inches high, thinking that maybe if I'm an inch high, it's fine. You got footage of that shot on the trail cam, if it worked. Holy cow! You got that whole thing on the trail cam, dude. That is actually possible. Yeah. Because he's literally, the trail cam is right there. <laughs> wow. And he is right here. <laughs> it is possible that I caught that on the trail cam. It is very possible. This is a nice looking deer. Yeah, it's a, uh, I mean, look, young bucks, you know, this is first year. This is what tastes the best and, and, and does. You know what the um, cheapest thing this time of year that you can get at the butcher shop is? I feel like this is going to be a bad joke. Deer balls. You know why? Because they're under a buck. <laughs> I'm so glad that I did not take a shot at that first deer that you were peer pressuring me hard to shoot. I wasn't peer pressuring. Because he was a couple years, I he was older than this. I wasn't even shooting. Huh? I said I had buck fever and I wasn't even. Uh, you shooting. did. You were like, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. I was like, that's not the one I want. I want to shoot him next year when he's bigger. I want meat right now. I want a young buck or a doe. So this is perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. And how much do you think that one weighs? Like 120? Oh. I would say Man. 110. Hmm. Yeah. That's a little guy. That's a little guy. That moon's incredible. I mean, it's like a harvest moon, practically. Very full, very beautiful. Well, <laughs> hanging out in uh, in a deer blind with your beautiful wife <laughs> on a cool winter Friday evening is the fun part. Once you pull the trigger, the work starts. For show. <laughs> yeah, he's got his work cut out for him tonight, doesn't he? 
That's all I had to say. That's all you had to say? That's all I had to say. Anything else you want to say? Well, there we go, guys. Uh, we had a mission to grocery shop tonight off of the property and mission accomplished. And Frankie just texted me, actually just popped up on my screen. Yay, she's happy that we got a deer. Now she's calling me. <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys. I got to take a call from my daughter. We will see you next time. Bye. Uh, Bunko, what are you doing? Are you helping? What's going on? What's going on, bud? Did you just hop up there to try to say hi to your buddy? Is that your buddy? You're the funniest cat. You're hysterical.